So there was a man, a very godly man, a very rich man, had a son. And he felt it was time for his son to get married. And so there was a discussion between the father and the son and the family. And, and he said, you know, I want the best for you. I want the best for your life. And it's time that you get married. And so I am going to send one of my employees to go and find you a wife. I'm going to go and send one of my employees to go and find you a wife. And the employee loved his boss, but also was a godly man. And he went out and how many understand that's a great responsibility? So not wanting to fail, what the man did was he began to ask God, God help me. God lead me, help me to find a wife hmm, for my boss's son. God gave him success. He came back with a very brilliant, beautiful, godly woman. Now, how many know that this is a Bible story? This is the story of Abraham and his servant. Yes? And some of you in your Western mindset are thinking, well, that's just ridiculous. You know, that's just... That's what Not only did not the father pick somebody, but he sent a servant. He, he sent an employee. Well, let me ask you, how well are you doing at picking your own spouses? Mm? How, how well, how well is society doing at picking their own spouses? I mean, they're not doing so well that sometimes they actually switch sides. How I many you know what I'm talking about? Some of you get that about three o'clock. You say, Pastor, is, is today about how to pick your spouse? No, maybe. But I want you to see something in Genesis 24, 27, before I take you to the main passage. This servant, after he had left Abraham, says, and he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his mercy and his truth toward my master, as for me being on the way, the Lord led me. As for me being on the way, the Lord led me. Imagine the, the weight of this responsibility. Imagine if you came back with like some ugly person. Come on, somebody. Or someone that didn't have the right character or someone that Abraham would look at or, or somebody that Isaac would look at and go like, what in the world did did you find but the servant turns to God and and I love this portion as for me being on the way the Lord led me it has been one of my one of my theme scriptures for my life not not that I've been searching you know because I have two daughters there's no way anybody's good for my daughter not even you know what I mean it would have to be like Jesus and he's not going to get married how many know what I'm talking about and and so it's not that I'm looking for for a spouse, but I being on the way, the Lord led me. Church, can I encourage us today that as we talk about letting God lead, last week we talked about let God breathe, today we're talking about let God lead, that we trust God that as we are on the way, the Lord will lead us. Mm -hmm. One of the best ways, one of the best things you can do is to get in God's way. Just get in his way so that not only are you on the way, but you are in the way. And so God can lead you by his spirit. God can direct you because how many understand that Holy Spirit is a leader? He loves to lead. He loves to lead. He, he loves to direct. He, he loves to show us the way. He loves to show us the, the way and the path of life so that we don't get lost so that we are not confused and we're not misdirected. Would you say this with me? Say, let God lead. Let God lead. Come on, let God lead. let God lead. God is faithful. He is trustworthy. God will lead you. And so I want you to stand because I want you to look at the children of Israel. Great example. I want you to see the Holy Spirit. 
want you to see the Holy Spirit. Pastor Moses, don't take offense to what I said. I'm not referring to you in particular. And I can see bitterness seeping. <laughs> bitterness seeping into your heart as I, as I speak. <laughs> Praise God. Fiery darts coming from the front row. Ex Exodus 13, 20 says this. So they took their journey from Succoth and camped in Etham at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them. And the Lord, the Lord himself went before them. Notice, by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light. So as to go by day and night, I mean, understand that's 24 7, <laughs> right? By day or by night, he did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Father, we honor you and bless you for your word. Thank you. Thank you that you are good and kind and merciful. Thank you that you lead us today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Before you're seated, turn to a couple of people, say, Let God lead. Come on, let God lead. Let God lead. Let God lead this morning. Let God lead. I, I, I hope that I can encourage you today that not only will you trust God, that God will lead you in the way, but, but hopefully God will, by the power of the Holy Spirit, reveal to you personally how God is either leading you, has led you, or will lead you. Because it's obvious that we don't have a, a, a cloud that is, is you know, before us today or this pillar of fire that, that we're following on a, on a daily basis. But how many understand that even though we may not have that manifestation, God is still with us? That God is still leading us. For, as for me personally, I gave this some thought. I, I said to the Lord, Lord, how have you led me when I examine my life, my ministry? How have you led me? I, I noticed something that in particular, God has led me personally by vision and by the word of the Lord. By vision and by the word of the Lord. I, uh, when I became pastor here, actually, uh, prophetess Nancy Clark prophesied to me and said, and said this. Said, you know, you're a man of skill. God was saying you're a man of skill, and I've skilled you, but I don't want you to lead this house by skill. I want you to lead by vision. Not that I'm not going to use my skill, but I want, you to, I want you to lead my people into their inheritance by vision because the Bible says that without vision, the people, and I don't want you to perish. I want you to live, and I want you to thrive. And I want you to be overcomers, and I want you to receive your inheritance, your promise from God, so that when you get to heaven, you will have fulfilled the purpose and the call of your life. Dr. Miles Monroe, you know, would always uh, preach this, and he would say, die empty. In other words, everything you need to do, everything you need to accomplish, accomplish it on the earth, right? Even Paul said, I am poured out. I am poured out. I, I have nothing remaining. Not that, not that we don't have anything of God, but the idea of whatever reason you're here, you're going to fulfill it while you're on the earth. You're going to arrive in heaven empty, but you're going to arrive with the fullness of God having accomplished your assignment and so for me vision has been important for me the word of the Lord whether whether it was times of COVID or various times I always say to God what's your word what what is your word to me personally what's the word to the church what is your word and what are you showing me so I can follow you God has a specific way to lead you many people say to me well well, pastor, how does God talk? And I say to them, how do you listen? God doesn't play games. God wants you to understand. Holy Spirit wants you to understand. That's why his job description is to take the mysteries of God and reveal them to you and me. He's the revealer. He's the one that, he's the one that wants us to get it and wants us to understand so that we can, we can walk with God. You know, I was singing a song, and I, I don't know many lines. I don't know, maybe Pastor Ranjeev, who's a little bit older than I am, maybe he knows this song, and um, a song goes like this. 
The Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. Do you know that song? You so, you know, yeah, you're just shaking your head. He knows it, but he's like, no, I don't know it. He knows it. Matthew, I was singing it all day yesterday. It's the only line I know. Pastor Carolyn goes, do you know any other line? I'm like, no. <laughs> but that's the heartbeat of the song. The, the Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. And the children of Israel were coming out of Egypt. They, they were coming out of bondage and slavery and and, and they were liberated people, but they didn't know how to live liberated. They, they didn't know how to live free after 400 years of, of captivity and slavery and being told every day when to get up and how to work and when to work and how to make bricks and when to lie down and when to take a break. And if you don't do it right, there's the taskmaster over you that's going to whip you. They didn't know how to be free people. They, they didn't know how to be liberated. And so they needed God. They needed the Spirit of God. By the way, the cloud and the fire, they, they are representation of Holy Spirit. We, we see that the fire came down in the upper room. You can see it through other scriptures where God will, 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 will show us the Holy Spirit through cloud and through fire and, and so that we have understanding. But he had to lead these people by day and by night because they had no idea where to go. They didn't have a country. They didn't have a passport. They didn't have an identity. All they had was this man, Moses, who showed up and said, I had an experience with God at the burning bush, and he told me to liberate you. And, and, and before things got better, things got worse. Sometimes when the deliverer comes, before things get better, things get worse. And, and sometimes people say to me, Pastor, you know, I, I received Jesus and my, and my world has gone chaotic. It might be chaotic for a season, but the Holy Spirit takes us from chaos into order. He takes us from curse into blessing. He, he brings us from slavery into freedom. And, but there is a turbulence. There is a turbulence because the enemy wants to intimidate you. The enemy wants to lie to you. The, the, enemy, the enemy wants to keep you in bondage. Listen to me, church. The enemy wants you to believe that it's better for you to live as a slave than a free person. Where are you going to go? You don't know the way. Where? You're going to get bitten by snakes and scorpions and, and, and you're not going to get very far in the desert heat is going to kill you and, and where are you going to find water out there? You're better, you're better, even though you're a slave, you're better to be here. You know, at least here you get some uh, garlic and leeks and you get some things like that. You don't know what's going to be out there and so what people do because of fear is they remain in bondage. They would rather remain subjected then live under God's freedom. And so the Lord, the Lord liberates them. And he says, I get it. I understand that. I understand that you're going out there, but I'm going to lead the way. And so the Bible says that the cloud went before them. The cloud, the pillar of cloud. And I want you to notice something, church, that it changed. By, by, by day, it was a cloud. And by night, it was a pillar of fire. Literally, at some point during the day, literally, it would transform before their eyes and go from a cloud into fire. Because if you've been in the desert, how many understand that the desert changes? The heat of the day and the cold of the night, and, and, and it's extreme. It's extreme. I, I remember flying to India, and I don't know, for some reason, this particular time, we had to go through Africa. We were, we were flying over Africa. And I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking out the window, and I'm looking, all I see is sand, the desert. And I thought to myself, you know, I've always not wanted to crash over water, but I think this could be worse. You know, like, <laughs> hmm? Look, I'm serious. I looked at it, and I thought, this is the, uh, man, this plane better stay up here, because this is... Who would find you out here? This is, this is a problem. And so out go the children of Israel in the wilderness. No GPS, no map, no country, no identity. Not knowing where they're going, leaving behind the, the comforts of life, even though there was slavery and having to trust God. My friends, your journey with God is like that. I remember my family being under spiritual bondage. 
And all of a sudden being liberated from that and being set free from that. But you see, we're always surrounded by these, these, these spiritual people and witch doctors and whatever that, 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 you know, had all this power. And all of a sudden we're like, okay, so God is l delivering us, but, but who will protect us? Who will watch over us? We, we, don't, we don't even know because we hadn't learned how to trust God. We hadn't learned yet that God is the most powerful God there is. Come on, somebody. So listen, Egypt is a very spiritual place. They, they saw the power of the Egyptians, not, not only in brute force, they, they saw their gods, they saw their demons, they, they saw their raws, if you will. They, remember that when Moses threw down the staff, Pharaoh said, cheap trick, Moses. And, and so a couple of the magicians came and their staff became snakes too. One problem. God's snake swallowed them up, hallelujah. Huh? It wasn't just a cheap trick. So, so what, what are you saying, pastor? What I'm saying is that, that God shows the supernatural, not, not just as a cheap magician, God shows the supernatural because it is also practical. It's practical. He had to protect these people. He, he had to show them, I'm with you. I've, I've delivered you. And, and remember, there was a few times when they wanted to turn back. As a matter of fact, there was a shortcut. There was an easier route. But God said, if I, if I take them that route, they're going to see war. And if they see war, they're going to want to turn back and go to Egypt because these weren't warriors. They, they weren't soldiers, not yet. The people, that, the people that fought with Joshua were not the people with Moses. These are slaves. They don't have weapons. They don't, they don't have anything. They're not trained. They're not, they're not ready to defend an ar against an army of any kind. That's why when, when Pharaoh, you know, by the Bible says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart. When the chariots of Pharaoh came after the children of Israel, God had to respond. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't you love to be Moses? He's got the Red Sea in front of him. The chariots of Egypt are coming to slaughter the people. And what does Moses do? He prays. Calls on God. You know what God says to him? Why are you crying out to me? Imagine. Why, why are you bothering me? Why, why are you asking me? Then he says, what, what's in your hand, Moses? Have I not given you a rod of authority? Why don't, you, why don't you stretch out your hand over the waters? And we've seen the, the greatest, one of the greatest miracles in the Bible. And, and, and for those of you that came to Israel with me to go into the Knesset, to go in the government, and all of a sudden, uh, a raid on the wall is Moses and the Reds. I mean, it is, it is just phenomenal. That's the story of their people. Because God is a leader. But this very God... Church, this very God that opens the Red Sea is the very God that you and I serve. Same God. Same God. Same God. Not a different God. Same God. Same Holy Spirit. And so you notice that the cloud and the fire represent God's presence. He was always there in front of them. They, they always saw him by day and by night. It, it didn't matter. 24-7, they were like, God is with us. God is with us. God is with us. In, in Exodus thirty-three sixteen, 16, listen to what Moses said. He says, for how then will it be known that your people and I have found grace in your sight, except you go with us? So we shall be separated or distinguished, your people and I, from all the people who are on the face of the earth. In other words, here's what Moses is saying. The only thing that sets us apart is that your presence is with us. The people had irritated God ten times. God was counting. And at one time, by the way, God said to Moses, I'm going to kill them all. And Moses, I'm going to start with you. Uh, be careful, APC. God doesn't kill you all. Start with me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's what he said. Now, whether some people say, thank you, my brother. Appreciate you laughing at my jokes. All right. Now, whether, whether, whether God was serious or whether he was testing the heart of Moses, because, because what he said here was, you know what, Moses? Mo, I'm not going with you. You're, you're irritating me. You're murmurers. You're complainers. I can't take it anymore. Can you imagine when you exhaust God? That's what he said. I can't. Delroy, welcome back, bro. He was at, uh, were you in Mexico? Putacana, oh, in, in uh, Dominican. 
Praise God. You look beautiful. The whole family. The rich get richer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise. Come on. Favor. God's presence. God's present. Amen. Let me tell you. Let me tell you how mean Brother Delroy is. He's, he's, he's texting me, WhatsApping me pictures from over there. Oh, Pastor, look how beautiful it is here. I'm like, you know what, bro? <laughs> I rejoice with you. I'm so glad you guys deserved it. And he, he works with our food hub now. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know who gets a job and goes on vacation. Anyway, that's another story. But. <laughs> Moses said, your presence, your presence, God. Because God said, I'll, I'll send an angel. You get an angel. Moses said, no. No deal. If you don't come, we don't go. We might as well stop right here. End the whole thing. Stop the train. We're not moving. I'm not going with an angel. And then finally, God gives in to Moses. He says, all right, I will, I will go with you because you have found grace in my sight. My friends, listen, what separates us from everybody else is only the presence of the living God. The presence in your life, the presence in your ministry, the, the presence in your home, the presence in your family, the presence in your children, every, everything you own, everything you're about, everywhere you go. When you go on vacation, you take the presence of God with you. My children, you know, we would go on vacation, Delroy. My, my children would always wait with anticipation because there was always a moment. Isn't this true, Pastor Carolyn? On vacation, there was always a God moment. There was always an assignment. Sometimes it was just in a pool, chilling law, and all of a sudden somebody comes and talks to me, and then the word of the Lord begins to come to that person, and, and my, my, my daughters would be, what's God going to do, Daddy? What's God going to do? I said, I don't know, babies. Let's find out. And, and we would just go about normal life, but how many understand you carry God on the inside? Huh? Some people are afraid to fly. I'm not afraid to fly. Because that plane ain't coming down until my time is done. That means everybody, everybody on that plane is safe. Now, if God says you're coming home, you're all finished. But <laughs> Come on, somebody. All this fear of this and fear of flying and fear, what for what? You're not going to live one day more and one day less than God says. And if it ain't your time, it ain't your time. You're not going anywhere. God, you have purpose. Let God lead you. And so, and so Moses says, no, 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 no. We, we need you. We need your presence. And, and so notice that, that God leads them. God, God, God demonstrates to them, I'm with you. I'm, I'm comforting you. I'm encouraging you that, that, at, that at nighttime, the fire is going to become your furnace. And in the daytime, the cloud is going to literally hover over you so that you will not be scorched. He was, he was the furnace by night and the AC by day. And they didn't even have to pay the bills. Huh? I don't know about you. I have an internal thermostat in my body. I walk into my house. I know. I know who's touched the heat. I know who's touched the AC. Do I have any men in this house that, that have a third? Come on, somebody, help me. Help me. It's cold in here. Put on a sweater, praise Jesus. Hey? Hey? Oh, my God. We got we to, gotta, all winter you've been freezing. Get a little bit of heat. My God, turn on the AC. No! Sweat a little bit. It's good for your body, praise God. But God went further. The Bible says there was not one feeble among them. Hmm? Their clothes didn't wear out. Their shoes didn't wear out. He had these fixed meals called manna that had the right nutrients and vitamins that, that kept them healthy and strong. Nobody was sick. Nobody, was, nobody had the sniffles. Nobody had COVID. Nobody needed a vaccine. Huh? God said, I'm going to take care of you. Your shoes are not going to wear out. Can you imagine? It was almost like, oh, my soles are wearing out. And then in the morning, you go put on your shoes, and your soles just grew. The le Come on, ladies, help me out here. The leather never worked. You're like, no, pastor, we got to go shopping. No, no, I, I get it. I get it. But, but there was no Walmarts. There was nowhere to go shopping, and there was no Kate Spade and all the rest of it. So God said, I'm going to care for you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm, I'm going to lead you. 
going to lead you by truth. I'm going to lead you by light. Because the Holy Spirit, church, he, he comes to guide us into all truth. He comes to reveal Christ. He, he comes to illuminate the Holy Scriptures. He, he comes to give us understanding about life. He, he comes to give us wisdom and revelation. And he, and, he, and he opens up our eyes so that we can see through the darkness. You know what's amazing about this cloud? You know what the Bible says? That on the Israelite side, it was light. And on the Egyptian side, it was dark. Huh? Almost like God saying, let your, let your gods, let your gods, you know, make some light. Let's see if your gods can, can make light. The gods that you worship. And church, let me tell you something. There is something very real about the Egyptian gods that even today we have entertainers and singers, Brother Delroy, that want to tap into these Egyptian gods that are demons. They are demons. Hello? They tap into it. They make no excuses. You know, I give you one of the most famous artists that literally says that, that she has a demon that if she gets injured, the demon will heal her on stage. There are people that are still today tapping into the reality of these gods. And, and church, have you thought about this? Have you, have you thought about some of the paintings that come from Egypt and, and, and how you have half men with, with bird heads? And have, do you think this is an artistic thing or is it something they really saw? Could it be a demonic manifestation or... Could it be some sort of mutation that they actually got into and that the people were actually drawing what they really saw amongst them? And remember, the Israelites would have seen this, and so you need a supernatural God that has enough power to over overpower the supernatural that you've seen already. It wasn't just Pharaoh. It wasn't just Pharaoh that was holding the people. This was demonic power in my family it was it was we were religious people we were Roman Catholic but we were we were powerless we we needed God the true God the one God to come and demonstrate to us someone just texted me I won't even give you the name of this individual but if I told you his name you know who he is, and he's very, very famous, very, very powerful, very, very rich. He just invited 40 multimillionaires to his private island. So how do I know this story? I'm connected to the person whose boss was invited to the island. The boss is a born-again, spirit-filled believer. It's invited basically because of their company and because of their wealth, but the individual that had invited them was preaching a gospel, not our gospel, a gospel, and was telling these millionaires, why? Powerful, influential, was telling these millionaires that he is connecting John to African demons because he wants to become like an African witch doctor. This is his words. His word so that he can change shapes and forms and so that he can heal people. And what he was telling them was, if you will tap in, then these demons will give you wisdom and you can make more money. And he said, this is the wisdom. This is the way. And so this is why I've invited you. And so the person that I'm connected to and said, you know, th th that boss said, no, 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 no. The Jesus is the way. Jesus is the wisdom. We need to be light in a dark place. We need to be light in a dark place. And Brother Delroy had sent me a video on, on Instagram, and I'd seen it where they had some kind of satanic ritual, and, and there they were, there they were, right, 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 right in your face online, where this, this witch was literally ripping up the pages of the Bible. How come they never rip up the pages of the Quran or other holy books, but they know that we're a passive people, and so they, you know, they rip up the Bible. Does anybody respond? No, because I, my friends, listen, there, there is such a hatred for Christ and a hatred for the church. It is unbelievable. It is seething. It, you know, Pastor Moses and I, we just, we just struck a nerve. To be honest with you, we struck a nerve. We did a podcast. By the way, some of you watch our podcast, and can, can we get some comments from people that understand God? 
because when we put out these podcasts, all these haters come out and, and, and just hostile people, hostile against God, hostile against church. And, and, and one person said, you know, all people's church, they're just money grabber. I'm like, who are you? Who are you people? You, 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 you're like snakes that you're in, the, you're, in the, you're, in the, you're in the jungle and you only come out to bite people. You don't even know. And by the way, we were very balanced. Very balanced, very biblical. And, but I just, the hatred. The, I mean, my God, there's paragraphs in there that I'm like, go give your head a shake. You see, because anything and anybody can have money. But you see, when God's people have money, when God has money, oh, it's a problem. It's a problem. I want to warn you. I just found out this week, you know that chat, GBT, am I saying it right? The artificial intelligence. Do you know that apparently now this thing can lie? It has learned how to lie. So now you have artificial intelligence that is fast and brilliant that knows how to lie. How will we ever know the truth? This is why, church, God has given us his word. And, and God had says, this is truth. The, the, this, is your, this is your plumb line. This is the light. This is the way. This is the, this is the revelation. This is what Holy Spirit breathes on. And, and this is why Holy Spirit gives you life and truth so that you won't, you won't be deceived and you won't follow the, you know, the, the, the lies and the deceptions and the things of the Egyptians. And I'm not even talking about the Egypt of today. I'm talking about, uh, you know, because then I'm going to get hate mail about how pastor is racist and hates Egyptian people. I'm talking about the Word of God. How many know that there are believers in Egypt today? How many understand that? I'm just so tired of the nonsense. Honestly, if I could just slap a few people and give them some common sense. Now let that slap anointing come on me, Candace. Praise Jesus. Huh? My God. I wonder if we're going to get to heaven and God goes, boom, what were you thinking, man? Now we have artificial intelligence that, that is lying and deceiving and and God has given us his word. And we, I don't know if you know this, but, but in California now, they want to ban the Bible. Because the Bible teaches against homosexuality and multiple genders. And they say, oh, this is, this is a, in America. My friends, in America, they're talking about banning the Bible. So then where do you get your morality? Where do you get your truth? Do you know where you get it? From the mob. Not the mafia. The mob in the, in the sense of, the, the majority rule, whatever, whatever the majority says is right, then that's what has to be right. Or the people that are the loudest, or the people that are the most political, or, or the people that can twist enough arms, all of a sudden everybody goes, yeah, 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 that must be right. You put something on Facebook, and nobody, you know, I don't know, I put these brilliant things, people don't respond. Church, listen to me very carefully. I'm not trying to be a hater. I'm not trying to attack people. But, but can I just say this? If, if they, quote unquote, can convince us as a society to deny basic biology, everything else is on the table. If, if they can convince us that men can get pregnant and that men can menstruate, then they can convince you of anything. Anything that wants to come down that pipeline, bestiality, pedophilia, whatever it may be, nobody can say no because that's their truth. But how many know we have truth? We have that cloud. Number two, I gotta, I gotta move on quickly here. Number two, that God is our, our source. I said that the supernatural is not only impressive, but, but that it is, that it is practical, that that the fire, for example, illuminated the darkness of night. It provided heat. It, and, and not only that, but, but fire is a purifier. Fire is a, fire is a cleanser. Fire is a destroyer. You're like, Pastor, how can God be a destroyer? Yeah, the Bible says he is a consuming fire. He destroys sin. He destroys evil. He, he destroys darkness. Fire is a part of judgment. Can I, can I just, this, I'm, I'm about to get into some serious trouble. 
There, there, there are fires that are burning in Alberta right now. But you have any idea what Alberta has done to pastors and what Alberta has done to the churches? See, nobody ever connects the dots that perhaps, huh? Isn't that what fire, fire is a judgment? Oh, pastor, fire is a judgment. What about the fires of California? See, most preachers, they don't want to tell you this stuff because they don't want to preach the Bible. God answers by fire. Elijah called down fire against the prophets of Baal. It's a, it's, it's a destroyer. It's combustible. Remember what, remember what Pastor Moses talked to us about Gideon, how, how all of a sudden the fire exploded and made the people look much more than they were, but there was only 300 because of the fire. You're baptized in fire. Do you notice that in the upper room, the Bible says that the sound came into the room. In other words, the sound was corporate, but the fire was individual. See, we love the sound. We love the whoo, holler and shout and scream. The fire, we don't like so much. We don't like that purifying agent. We don't like that destroyer. We don't like the things that, that consume us, but, but God is a fire. And he's all consuming and he's also light. He is a, an illuminator. He brings us into truth and, and guidance. And, and I wrote in here, God leads us by truth because the truth sets you free. Yeah. Be free, church. Yeah. God leads you so that you would be free. And that your children would be free. But you see, sometimes, sometimes we get discouraged. I get it. Because we don't see God doing certain things and then we kind of go, well, maybe God doesn't have that kind of power or maybe God doesn't want to move anymore. Maybe God doesn't want to demonstrate that power. I'm sure that that discussion took place in 400 years at, at other times where, where they said, you know, where, where is the God of Elijah? Where, in other words, they were saying, where is the God of power? But for 400 years, they were slaves, but... But the day came when God spoke to a man out of a bush that was on fire. It was on fire. The God that is full of light, it sheltered them. How many understand that the Bible says that even Jesus will come in the clouds? So you have a clue, right? If it's a sunny day, he's not coming. Oh, he's not coming today. It's really... It's really sunny outside, but if it's, if it's cloudy, I'd worry. I want to close with this, church. How many understand what I'm saying today? Say this with me. Say, let God lead. I want you to notice that the cloud was always moving. The cloud that's over your life and the fire is not stagnant. The Bible tells us that not only was it in front of them, to lead them, but when the Egyptians showed up, the Bible says the cloud moved from the front. It went behind them to protect them against the chariots. The Bible, God, you got to read that story. The Lord is hilarious. I want you to know the, the Bible says that the Lord was kicking their tires off them and he, he was just tormenting them. But all the time he was baiting them as, as the people were crossing the Red Sea. He was baiting them into the sea because, see, Pharaoh had mocked God. He, he baited them to come so that he could drown them and destroy them. When he wasn't in front of them and he wasn't behind them, the Bible says that at times the cloud would just hover over them. And then at one point, the Bible says that the cloud literally, you ever, you ever been in a foggy day? The cloud literally came down. In other words, can I say this church, they, they were literally baptized in the Holy Spirit because they were ingesting God, breathing him in, breathing him out. As a matter of fact, the Bible says they were baptized in Moses and in the cloud. It was amongst them. It was behind them. It, it was close to them. It was within them. There were, there were times where God just said, I, I want to be close to you so that you sense me. 
You ever get a sense of God? It's, it's, I'm not trying to be funny here, but it is the closest, and I guess now I gotta be careful in our, in our world, but it is the closest I believe to feeling pregnant as a man is, is you sense the life of God inside. You know, I, I'm sure as, as, as a woman, the, the baby kicks and the baby moves and you're like, the baby's alive. Come, come, and, come and feel the baby. You know, you see your husband, come, come and feel the baby. The baby's kicking. God, inside of you, letting you know I'm alive in here. I'm alive in here. You're, you're my temple. I'm alive in you. I'm the living God. Here to lead you. See, Pastor, can God lead me to a spouse? I believe He can. Pastor, can God lead me to a job? I believe He can. Pastor, can God lead me from one country to another? I believe He can. Can He lead me from one ministry to another? I believe He can. And 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 Pastor, what if I what if I get it wrong? What if I become a Jonah? God can find you. God can lead you. If you're honest with yourself, you would have to say that even before you were born again, God was leading you. God was protecting you. He was was directing you. He was guiding you. And so you're sitting here and you're like, well, pastor, I get up in the morning. I don't see no cloud. I don't see no fire. I, I don't see these manifestations you're talking about. But listen, listen to me. Listen to me. Because there came a day when the fire went away and the cloud went away and Moses went away but Joshua was leading and then Joshua never had a pillar of fire although he saw it can you imagine being Joshua for 40 years seeing this every day and now it's gone I see the cloud every day and now it's gone and my and my mentor my pastor my my spiritual leader I followed him every day and now he's gone but Joshua meets a man the commander of the Lord's army changed his life because even though Joshua didn't see with the naked eyes he saw the hand of God He saw the enemies of God fall. He saw the walls of Jericho fall. He he saw God do things by the Spirit. That's how you and I live. That cloud and that fire, they're still with you. You may not see it with your physical eyes, but my friends, I want to encourage you, the hand of God. John, have you seen the hand of God in your life? I've seen it in your life. I've seen it in many of your lives where God has answered and God has moved and and God has led you and God has delivered you and God has freed you. Why? Because that same Holy Spirit that delivered those people is the same Spirit that lives in you. I want you to stand with me this morning. Can you say this with me? Say, let God lead. Come on, let God lead worship team is going to close us in worship and in a song but I want to pray over you Father I thank you that you are our leader you lead us by the spirit of God you're the same yesterday today and forever nobody leads like you Nobody loves like you. Nobody gives hope like you. Father, I I ask you for hope and faith in this room because there are some people that are asking questions. I've been in those seasons, Father. I pray that hope and faith and confidence would be released. And Lord, we say today, lead. Lead the way. We will follow. 
bless your people today in Jesus' name. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for watching. We really appreciate your time. Will you please like and subscribe so that you will get notifications? And by the way, your comments and your feedback are very important to us. Even sermon series and messages that you would like to hear about, please let us know. Drop us a line. We would love to incorporate that into our teaching and our preaching. We appreciate you and thank you.